What's up everyone, Miguel Blackwood here, back with Blackwood Fitness, and today we're going to be talking about CLA. But before we get into that, I want to say that I'm going to try to do a, a more uh, video responses to emails. So hit me up, and if you have a really good question, I'll make a video about it. Okay, so CLA. What is it? Well, CLA stands for Conjugate Linoleic Acid. Um, and this is a dietary polyunsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated means that there is more than one double bond in its chemical structure. Uh, conjugate means that uh, it has a pair of double bonds and in between these double bonds there is a single bond. So it'll be like double bond, single bond, double bond. So any linoleic acid that is in this form can be called conjugate linoleic acid. And because of this, there are actually 28 different ways that we can arrange it. So there are 28 different types of CLA. And we actually only have to worry about two. We have to worry about cis-9 trans-11 CLA. And this is the type that is in CLA supplements. A cis bond means that the hydrogens are in the same plane and it will look like this. A trans bond means that the hydrogens are across each other and it will look like this. So CLA is technically a trans fat, but it's the exception to the rule. It's the one trans fat that can actually be beneficial to you. The trans fat that we see on, on food labels is this form of CLA. Yes, the dietary trans fat that we so often hear negative comments about is technically uh, a form of a CLA. However, notice the difference. This is trans 10 cis 12 CLA. It seems like it wouldn't make a difference, but it makes a huge difference. In the context of this video, when I say CLA, I'm talking about the 9 cis trans 11 CLA, the good one. And when I say trans fat, I mean uh, the trans 10 cis 12 CLA. Okay, so CLA, the good one, is uh, marketed for three things. It's marketed for um, being a fat burner, for in improving your cholesterol, and for improving your insulin sensitivity. So uh, let's look at this. And when you look at the studies uh, on CLA, it's very important that you look at which one they're talking about. For example, if you consume trans fat, it will raise your LDL, your bad cholesterol, and it will lower your HDL, your good cholesterol. When people say that CLA is bad for your cholesterol, they're talking about trans fat. And of course trans fat is bad for your cholesterol. It's probably one of the worst things that there are for your, for your cholesterol. However, CLA, the, 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 the one that we supplement, has actually been shown to lower your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, and uh, increase your HDL, which is your good cholesterol. Now, in terms of weight loss, there are these enzymes called uh, fatty acid synthase and uh, lipoprotein lipase. And these enzymes are responsible for synthesizing body fat. Specifically, uh, lipoprotein lipase is on the surface of the red, uh, of the red blood cells that uh, line blood vessels. So this uh, enzyme is responsible for taking the, the, the fat that's circulating in your blood and storing it as adipose tissue, as body fat. So what's been found in cows and in rats so far is that CLA will actually somewhat block, it will inhibit uh, the function of these enzymes. It will prevent the body from being able to store fat as efficiently. But the question is, does this transfer over to humans? Well, if it does, it would mean that not only would you uh, uh, not store as much body fat, but because you're not storing it, there will be more circulating in your blood. And because your body doesn't want you to have more than a certain amount of fat um, uh, circulating in your blood, you will actually uh, use this fat as energy. It's your body's way of getting rid of it. And this will be muscle sparing, because if your body is using more fat as energy, it won't uh, break down your muscles for energy because it will want to obtain the energy from the fat that's circulating in your blood. So does this transfer over to humans? The research is limited, but from what I have seen, yes, it can uh, uh, help to block uh, fatty acid synthase and lipoprotein lipase in humans, thus causing you to uh, store less fat and uh, use more fat as energy 
and have to uh, resort to less muscle breakdown for energy. So when someone quotes a study and they say, well, CLA was shown to actually cause weight gain, they're talking about trans fat. Trans fat can cause weight gain. Now, what about in terms of insulin sensitivity? Again, the research is limited, but uh, the, the, the CLA has been shown that it can uh, help you to regulate blood glucose levels and increase insulin sensitivity. However, trans fat, the bad CLA, will actually um, slow down your whole digestion process, it will uh, decrease metabolism, and it will actually make you more insulin resistant. So that's why there are studies out there saying CLA uh, it makes you more insulin resistant. It's because they're talking about trans fat. Okay, so, so far we have said that the good CLA can help you to uh, improve your cholesterol levels. It can help you to block the, the function of fatty acid synthase in lipoprotein lipase and it can uh, help you to regulate blood glucose levels and improve your insulin sensitivity. So why aren't people freaking out about the supplement? Why isn't everyone buying into it? And it's because if you have been listening, you've heard me say that the research is limited. And this is because there are 28 different types of CLA. And when scientists uh, do experiments on CLA, they'll give uh, the, the subjects like different ratios of CLA, they'll give them like a 2% of this, 3% of that, 95% of this, and they'll, they'll give them a whole array of ratios. And it's very rare for us to see that the scientists give them the, the CLA that you would buy at your supplement store, the CLA that is mostly the 9-cis trans 11 CLA. And this is because no one is going to fund a study that only looks at the CLA that a bodybuilder would take. The only people who would fund a study like this are supplement companies. And when a supplement company funds a study, all of a sudden nobody trusts it. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence that CLA works. I know people that swear by this product. But we don't know how much of this is, is actually the CLA and how much is just placebo. So what do I recommend you do? I would go for, for something like, like carnitine before I went for CLA just because it has a little bit more research done on it. If you do decide to try CLA, I recommend that you take uh, between 4 to 6 grams of the stuff. And I think Dr. Jim Stepani recommends up to 9 grams uh, of CLA. If you're doing intermittent fasting, just know that CLA is a dietary fat. So you shouldn't take this during your fasting period. And if you're tracking macros, you should uh, account for them in, 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 in your macros. So that's it guys. I hope this helps you understand CLA a little bit better.